Let us pray. Lord, speak to us through your words of Scripture. And Lord, let us hear the words that you have for us by your Spirit. Plant your truth deep within us and shape us in your likeness so that in the light of Christ, we can be seen in our actions and in our decisions that it is you that lead us. We ask all of this in Christ's name, amen. Our scripture reading this morning continues from Mark, and um, in the book of Mark, you always find that, that so many people bring the paralyzed, the sick, the blind, the helpless, the powerless, the marginalized to Jesus. People are always bringing people to Jesus for healing, and time and time again, there are always those in this book that try to prevent the people who need Jesus' help the most from getting to him. Such is our story today. This reading is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. Here ends our scripture reading. Thanks be to God for his word and to his name be all glory and praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Today is World Communion and Thanksgiving. We have boxes up the front to collect, uh, collect offerings for the uh, food bank, and uh, that's a good thing. We will, in a few minutes, gather around the Lord's table and, and celebrate communion. Um, the thing that fascinates me about today is, is it's, it's two events at once, not only will we be joining millions of people, millions of Christians around the world celebrating the Lord's table, but we will also be joining with millions of perhaps non-Christians around the table celebrating food. There, there's no real definition between our regular everyday life and, and our church life. Do you notice that? We join with people. People are always the common underlying thing. And, and so as we celebrate today, I hope that you take that forward with you that the life that we celebrate Sunday morning, we carry into Monday. We carry into Tuesday. That there is no difference who we are and whose we are doesn't change from day to day. It always remains the same. We even find in, in the book of Mark, one of the, one of the reasons I, I love Mark is because things are generally fairly simple in Mark. There, it, Jesus quite often teaches with an underlying message, but sometimes he's very plain. For instance, when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper in Mark, he says as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. 
Then he broke it in pieces, gave it to his disciples, and said, take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup of wine, and, and he gave thanks for it. And, and he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. Then he said to them, this is my blood, which confirms a covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice for the many. Simple, easy to follow, complete in its detail, easy to understand. Eat the bread, it is my body. Drink the wine, it is my blood. And yet, over the centuries, this blessing that comes from this act of worship by eating the simple foods of the table of our Lord with our friends has been held back from many by a few. Even in the Presbyterian Church. Now, some of you may not be old enough to remember this, but others of you might be. Remember when you had to have a chit. And, and unless you put it in, unless you had it on Sunday morning, you could not take communion. The elder would come and visit you, decide whether or not you were worthy of communion, and if you were, you got a little thing and you get to put it in the, in the plate as you came in. Now, if you don't remember that, perhaps you remember when we didn't allow children at the table. One of the, one of the designs of this church, and, and, and one of the things that, that I'd like to help you guys remember is, is why is the table placed up here? Does anyone know? Fencing. We used to fence the table. Children were not allowed at the table. Non-professing members were not allowed at the table. Many people were not allowed. If you were not a regular attender, you were not allowed at the table. We kept people from the table. Now, lest you think we're a bad bunch of people, we're not. That was done everywhere. It was cultural. It was a cultural thing that we be the gatekeepers for the Lord's table. Now, sometimes when we read a story like we just read, and we're, we're, we want to pick on those disciples, Jesus got angry with them, yes, because they were keeping the parents from bringing the children. He said, they said, no, you can't, Jesus can't be bothered with you guys. And Jesus got angry and said, no, don't stop them. But why were the disciples stopping them? It was cultural. Children did not have a place in society. So for, for the disciples to stop the children from coming because Jesus was doing important things. He was healing people. He was blessing people. He was gi giving the blind sight. Adults. Children didn't have a place in society. Now, I know that's a little hard for us to, to sort of read back on because in our culture, what are children? Incredibly important, special. Yeah, right? It's the complete opposite. So we sometimes have, we, when we see that, we read it through our lens. We read it through our bias. We read it through the way our culture is set today. And yet, in our culture, in still many cultures, children are not allowed at the table. The table is not unfenced. Children still have to be, they have to have gone through confirmation. Everybody know what confirmation is? Yeah, that's, that's when you're baptized as a child, and then it, later on in your years, you go through those classes, you learn the catechisms, and you make a profession of faith before the congregation, and, and you understand it. Does anybody remember the last time when classes were done here? See? Hmm. We've forgotten about that. Now, I, I would ask a lot of you that were baptized as children, did you go through confirmation? Yeah, some did. Did the majority? How many people have not been through confirmation? Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people. So. Technically, those people who have not come up here and been through the classes and learned from the minister and made that profession of faith could not take the table. They had to be passed over. 
I know, it makes us sound bad, doesn't it? The choir's up here is going, holy cow. <laughs> yeah, it makes us sound bad. But culturally, that's the way the culture was. It came from a time when we were a Christian culture. Everybody that sat beside you probably went to church. Your neighbors went to church. Their neighbors went to church. Your family went to church. Everybody was a Christian. Is that the place we live in now? No. The church is always changing. Contrary to what we may think, because we, we, we like our, our physical trappings, the actual actions of the church reflect the culture. No matter how we can, how, no matter how we try to get away with it, we try to move away from it, it doesn't. It always reflects the culture. So therefore, the Presbyterian church says, no, we do not fence the table. Times have changed. We are, not a, we are not a completely Christian culture anymore. Not everybody goes to church. Not everybody understands the Lord's table. Not everybody's been through, through um, catechisms. Not everybody's made that confession of faith. A lot of people are searching. A lot of people don't know. The children have such an open faith. Jesus said, don't, let, don't stop the children from coming to me. Oh, Things have changed. Culture's changed. And so we have moved forward. We are a Reformed denomination, Reformed and ever reforming to the Word of God. Right? That's, that's, our, that's our profession of faith. Reformed and ever reforming to the Word of God. Jesus says, don't, let the, don't stop the children from coming. So they, they come forward. And along with the children, we have opened the table to everyone because we come to the table to celebrate. We come to the table to remember. We come to be renewed and restored and to encourage, to be encouraged to continue in all that is good, taking Jesus to the world and inviting people to meet our Lord. As in Jesus' time, it's still done today. And we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made we remember that that night of that last supper, he said, this is my body, this is my blood. And then, very shortly after that, Jesus goes to the cross. Very shortly after that, Jesus is resurrected and is alive. Very shortly after that, Jesus ascends back to the Father. These are all the things we remember but we can't forget to remember that very shortly after this, Jesus will return. And so that's why we come together as a family to celebrate and wonder at the amazing love that has been shown to us and shared with us. As we come to the table, that is what we are called to remember. What kind of love is this that Jesus gave himself for us? We may not fully understand, we may not fully realize, but today as we come to the table, we are fully gathered in our seeking. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we can come before you. We thank you, Father, that you have called us. We think about the people this morning, Lord, that are not here with us because they are traveling, because they are visiting family, because they are thankful, Lord, that they are gathered with the people that they haven't seen for a while. And Lord, we think about the people who are not here this morning because they just couldn't get out of bed. They couldn't find it in themselves to come and join with your people. Lord, they may be broken of heart. They may be broken of mind, of spirit. They may be broken of body. But Lord, we lift them up to you because it is our pleasure and our privilege to pray for those around us. We lift them up to you that they may know that they have the love of you around them, that others care for them and want to take them to you, that they may know you better. Lord, we lift them up that they may be healed, that they may be peace, Lord, we think about those that are suffering. We ask that you ease their pain, give them peace. May they know that all things are in your control. We ask, Lord, as we come to the table this morning, 
that our hearts are open, our minds are open. Lord, that our ears hear your voice, that our mouth voices the praise and the wonder that is you. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.